right. Um, another reminder, this is just this is continued from yesterday in section um, 5.5. This is just another reminder. We started off yesterday about or with, the, with the reminder to the derivative of the ln of u. What, what, if you remember, and I know you guys have told me that you don't remember anything from before break, but do you, can someone in here recall what the derivative of an ln is? Prime it's u prime over u. Very nice. It's u prime over u. So it's the derivative of the u, derivative of the function divided by that function. So the derivative of ln of u is equal to u prime over over u. But that's how I defined it to you, and that is true. That is true. But technically, what we're doing in the bottom here is also multiplying the bottom by the ln of of um, the ln of e. So what is the ln of e? One. The ln of e is 1. So in this case, you don't need to have it there because it's 1 anyway. We're just multiplying it by, by 1, which isn't going to change the value of it. So I'm saying that to you because in a second here, when I give you guys a new definition, what about this? The derivative of log base a of some function, that is the same thing as the derivative of u divided by u. What does ln mean? I'm going to back up here. What does the ln mean? Natural, natural, natural log. But really, it's, it's the shortened way of saying log base e. Log base e is the natural log. So you needed to probably hear that to understand why am I multiplying by the ln of e there? I'm multiplying by the ln of e because that e is its base value. So I'm saying that to you now because here, when we have log base a, on the bottom here next to our u, what do you think we're going to multiply by? We're going to multiply by the natural log of the base value, so the natural log of a, the ln of a. Okay, so here we didn't need to do it because the ln of e is 1. But here the ln of any other base value is not going to be 1, so we are going to need to include it. So new definition. By the way, that bright piece of paper that I gave you guys yesterday? That's on there. That's on there. So use it. You are allowed to use that on the test, too. Make sure you don't make any marks on it because I won't let you use it if there's anything else on it. All right? Are we okay with this? So you take the derivative of the u, divided by u, just like normal, but in addition, dividing by u, we have to divide by u times the ln of the base value of the logarithm. First example. Okay, you good? Okay. The first example, I'm not sure why I started down there, probably because it was selected. Okay. Um, first example, f of x is equal to log base 2, log base 2 of x cubed. Well, according to your definition of derivative, to find the derivative of this thing, what do you do on the top? Derivative. The derivative of u. Of u. What is u in this case? Three. X cubed. So what's the derivative of x cubed? Three. Yeah. Square. Square. Right, squared. Divided by divided by x cubed, x cubed times the log of two times the natural log of the base value, which is two. Let's simplify it now. So how do you simplify three mm -hmm. x squared over x cubed? What's going to be left on the top? A three. What's going to be left on the bottom? An x, an x and an L. Hey, Brian, what was the question? Oh. You scared me, don't do that. <laughs> That's so cute. Yeah. 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 All right, another example. Did you guys, I'm sorry, I went, did, did you guys catch all that? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's it? Yeah. That really was it. 
Oh. Well, for that example. I thought you meant already, I thought you meant already done for the no, day. No, like that's it. That's all we have to do. Larissa, are we good? Yeah. I don't believe you. Yeah. I like writing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, another example. Log base three. Aspects. <laughs> Log base 3 of x squared over x minus 1. Yay. And that doesn't look very nice, does it? And it doesn't look very nice because it is a, well, it's a quotient rule. But you know what? Don't do a quotient rule then. Remember, the, remember your properties when you're dividing? What do you do? Yeah, you pull it apart and you subtract instead. So do a rewrite of this first. Make this instead, make it log base 3 of x squared minus log base 3 of x minus 1. So this is a rewrite. We have not started to find the derivative yet. We've just rewritten. So let's do a derivative now. So you're going to do the derivative of each one separately. So the derivative is... on the top. Yeah, the derivative of x squared, the derivative of x squared is is 2x. You divide that by x squared. X squared. And you have to multiply that by the ln of what? 3. The ln of 3. Minus, what about the second part? Log base 3 of x minus 1. What's the derivative of x minus 1? 1. Is 1. Divided by the function itself, which is x minus 1, multiplied by the ln of what? 3. All right, we have two. We're, we're subtracting fractions, and the fractions that we're subtracting have different denominators. So when they have different denominators, you're going to cross multiply. What can I do before I even start doing that, though? What can I do with this first fraction? Yeah, simplify it a little bit, make it a little bit easier for you guys to multiply in the end. So I'm going to be left with a 2 on the top, and on the bottom, what am I left with? An x, and an ln of 3 minus 1 over x minus 1 times the ln of 3. Two fractions different denominators. Do you see what I did, you guys? From this stuff to this stuff, I did nothing except simplify these x's right here. I got rid of the x on the top, have one less x on the bottom. What do we need to do now? Cross multiply. Cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply the 2 <coughs> times x minus 1 times the ln of 3. So for right now, I'm just going to keep this 2. I'm not even going to distribute yet. I might not do that at all. 2 times x minus 1 times the ln of 3 minus, what now? x minus x the ln of 3. x the ln of 3. And then I have to divide that by those two denominators multiplied. So we have an x, and we have an x minus 1. Are you okay with what I just said? No. I, I took this x right here. I multiplied it by that x minus 1. Uh -huh. I still have those ln of 3s, but I have two of them. We have two ln. Well, it's the ln of 3, actually, ln of 3 squared. But I'm just going to leave it like this, ln of 3 times the ln of 3. We'll leave it like that for now. What can I do to simplify this? Take out an ln of 3. And I can do that. This time I can do that because in this, and in this, and in the entire bottom, they all have a ln of 3. So I can get rid of that ln of 3, I can get rid of that ln of 3, and I can get rid of one of the ln of 3s on the bottom. I'm still going to have an ln of 3 left over in the denominator. Yes? <laughs> Alright, so simplify what's left over. I have a 2 times x minus 1. What is 2 times x minus 1? 
two left. Minus two. Two X minus two. Minus minus X. All divided by what's left over in the bottom. X squared minus X. X squared minus X. With this whole thing, make sure you put parentheses around it. And the ln of three, which simplifies to give you X minus two divided by X squared minus X. Yes. Miss Corey, what I thought we I thought we kind of just crossed with the ln of three. Like I thought we had to take that out and then put in parentheses. No, we don't have to do that. No, you don't need to do that. If all three, I I always think of this part right here as being like one term. Mm -hmm. So it's the left term and the right term and the denominator. Notice the denominator is all a bunch of things being multiplied. Yeah. Since they're all be so if there is something that is common to all three of those pieces, mm -hmm. you can cross it off one time. There is still an element of three left over, but we can only cross off one of them since there is one that is alike to all three parts of that. Okay. So if you were to add them then, then you would take it out? Like say it's two times x one plus l n of three minus x plus two. If there was a plus right here in between those two, then you could not. You would not be able to because this part right here would be lacking the ln of three. Yeah, that plus and minus signs in between those screw everything up. Okay? Yeah, that's always been that's always been a tough thing for, for kids to get over the years. Yes? So if you distributed the, the two before and then pulled out an x from each, would that be okay? Um, if you distributed a two, are you talking about distributing a two like right here? Yeah, because you, you have two x minus two in one side, and you have still have the minus x, and then you have the x times x minus one because you pull x out of each, and then it has to be two. No, it's the, the minus two is the minus one. Oh. Wow. <laughs> there you go. Oh. <laughs> we okay? Yeah. I have one more example. And it's a shorter one. Actually, no, it's not shorter. All right, here we go. Let's get it over with. Um, f of x is equal to log base 4 of 1 plus e to the power of x <laughs> squared. Log base 4 of 1 plus e to the x squared. Out here? Oh, two. Oh, two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're screwing up except I did that. Oh, it's three. Okay. What we'll makes it hard to find the derivative of? Everything. Everything, yes. <laughs> one plus the e of x. Well, no, squared. that's easy to find the derivative. The squared. The squared is, makes, what's make, is what makes it hard. Any suggestions? Chain rule. Chain rule. So what's u? This, this is what's making it difficult to find the derivative of. So we need to come over here to the side and we need to identify u. That whole thing is being squared. So u is that whole thing. So u is going to be log base 4 of 1 plus e to the power of x. What's the derivative of u? You don't have to do a product rule. No, nope. we're not multiplying two things. We are finding the derivative of a logarithm, not a logarithm times something else. Okay? So we need to use the rule that I just showed you. What's the rule that I just showed you? Derivative. U prime over u times ln. Divided by the ln of so, um, what is the derivative of 1 plus e to the x power? E to the x. E to the x power. And that might be a little bit foggy to you guys because we haven't talked about that since before break. So the derivative of 1 plus e to the x power. 
Well, what is the derivative of 1? Zero. Is zero. What is the derivative of e to the power of x? E to oh, the x times 1. e to the power of x times the derivative of the power. To the one. one. Yeah, so times 1. So the derivative here is just going to be 1 plus e to the x. And then we have to divide that by what? 1 plus e to the x. Isn't it just like the x times x? Yeah, oh my gosh. Yes. Sorry. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Derivative of 1 is 0. On the bottom, we have 1 plus e to the x. And we're going to multiply by the ln of what? 4. The ln of 4. That's what we learned yesterday. That's what we learned yesterday. Yeah. This law, yeah, the derivative of a log base 4, this rule right here, is um, what we learned today. Down here on this. Um, Screen at the bottom, and I don't know where it is now. So, hi, hi. Sorry to interrupt your class, but can I get one of your own names? Sure, one of your pictures. Like your two sixteen. <laughs> yes? Are you okay? Look look at the top of your notes. Before I gave you the first example today, that is the definition of a derivative of a log should be written up there. So that's where that came from. All right, so let's go back to this. Let's do a quick rewrite. This is actually f of x is equal to this whole, what is this thing, you guys? U squared. It is u, so we have u squared. So the derivative of this thing is going to be 2u, but because we use the chain rule, at the end we have to tack on the derivative of u. So it's going to be 2u times u prime. So now we just need to go in and just plug everything in. So this is going to be equal to 2 times u. Well, what is u? Log base, log base 4. Log base 4. 1. 1 plus e to the power of x. Times what? E of x times 4 times this big old thing. Times this big old thing. That big old derivative there. So we have e to the power of x divided by 1 plus e to the power of x times the ln of 4. Um, we are certainly getting very, very close. In fact, I would almost go as far as to say that you probably can't clean that up very much, other than maybe you could put all of this stuff in the numerator right next to e to the power of x. But I would say probably not even worth the lead in your pencil to do that. I would probably leave your answer just like this.